Hi everyone, I'm Jung Yoon Kim from University of Maryland and I'm so glad to have my presentation here for Decagon Device Virtual Seminar. So I'll present some of my research that I have done during my PhD at University of Georgia and my research is interested is mostly on the plant water relationship physiology so I use soil moisture sensors and data logger very much and I could get very good powerful analysis from that so I would like to share some of that so I use soil moisture sensors a lot with my research because it could give very good idea about the substrate water contents or soil moisture contents of the soil environment of the plants so I could use the data logger to monitor and control the substrate water contents with a soil moisture sensor so I could get the estimation of the plant water use per day or per hour and it could also give very well described the soil moisture contents so with that I could get much better idea about the, the drought physiology of the plants so I would share on what I have done so this is the system that I use with a soil moisture sensor as you see in this chart in this um, graph this is the soil moisture sensor that Decagon has um, this is called DC5 soil moisture sensor and this can measure the dielectric properties of the substrate so it could give the volumetric water contents of that substrate and it is connected to the data logger so whenever the, we program the data logger okay the, the data logger is kind of a small computer that can collect and record and process the data so whenever the sensor read the set point sensor read the substrate water contents less than the set point when the substrate goes dry and when the measurement is less than the set point the, deck, the data logger which is a small computer will process to turn on the switch for the irrigation so through this relay driver it will turn on the power to the solar node valve and it will irrigate to the plant so it will maintain the, the set point substrate water contents throughout the experiment so it could maintain that sub specific sub set point all the time so it has this powerful ability so this gave me very good um, research capability so at the same time it gave us um, how much irrigation happened by programming the data logger and it also gave all the substrate water content change throughout my experiments so I will share some of data now and also at, yeah, at the same time I also measured the temperature and relative humidity to get to know the environment of the plants and also the, the light sensor photosynthetic active radiation light sensor gave me also a very good idea about the light environment of the plant because light is one of the most important factor for plants for water use of the plants so this graph shows um, on the x-axis it shows the days after planting and y-axis it shows how much water the plant used so in this graph it shows the daily water use of the petunia so I use that data logger to collect how much irrigation happened per day and it shows these lines and um, the more water use has been done from the bigger pots so it has three pots but what I want to show you it is we could get we could the quantify the daily water use of the plant through this soil moisture sensor and data logger programming and at the same time by measuring the environmental factors of the plants we could get to see the um, correlation between the environment and plant daily water use so it shows the DLI which is the daily light integral the total amount of the light per day it has very good fits between um, the water use and light environment and at the same time the vapor pressure deficit which is how much water vapor vapor the relative something like the humidity relative humidity but vapor pressure deficit is kind of direct effect to the transpiration so it shows very good fits 
between good correlation between the vapor pressure deficit and daily water use of the plant. So using those kind of environmental factors and plant factors, I could get very good regression model of predicting, estimating the daily water use of the petunia. And also for drought study, so this is a little different um, study that I have done. Plant feel thirsty whenever they have less water in the substrate. So most people have, many people has been done with the drought physiology. But, and this graph shows very good overview of drought physiology. But the problem I have had was it's mostly on the water potential, which is a little bit hard to measure during the plant growth. And for mostly horticultural people, it may be much easier to use the sensor for substrate water content. And it will be much easier to understand what happened for the substrate and just to think about the plant, what will happen. So I try to explain what will happen when the substrate water content says certain point. So this is what I have done. So I try to have that drought study. And at the same time, drought might be very beneficial for some plants, such as sometimes a mild drought can slow plant growth. So sometimes some people want to have some marketing time a little bit later. Then he can just make a little drought, but plant will still grow, but slowly. And he can make right marketing time. Or sometimes some post-production benefits can be done by the mild drought, such as um, when they are very well irrigated, they cannot do well on the shelf at the um, big shops like garden center. They will just dry up very quickly and they're very weak. So it can give a longer shelf life if can they have some mild drought. And also some better landscape performances can be happen through this mild drought by hardening of the plants because yeah, we people, we can also have some exercise and it will make you stronger, right? So some mild drought can make plants stronger. And this is mostly from the acclimation part of the plant. But we have a question here. What is this mild drought? So we have not been well described this mild drought well. So I try to show what is the mild drought in substrate water contents level. So this, is one, this was my objective of study. So what specific substrate water contents level is mild drought? So I tried to look at their physiological responses, to look at their acclimation level. Do they really acclimate? And how they acclimate to that substrate water contents? And I also looked at the gene expression level, because most people, many people have working on the molecular study nowadays. So this soil moisture sensor actually can work with this gene expression study as well. And find out which substrate water contents level will be beneficial to give plants a better site, like longer the shelf life or make them stronger. So I try to look at the acclimation and what is the severe drought level. So I use the petunia plant, which is common bedding plant. So I planted a plant in a liter tray, and we use common greenhouse mix with 60% pit moss and 40% polite with slow release fertilizer. And we had irrigation with this irrigation grid, the customized grid during irrigation pipes. And we had 10%, 20%, 30%, 40% substrate water contents in volumetric water content. So we had four different treatments. And we used this two EC5 soil moisture sensors. So it's just the same as what I showed you in previous slide. So the soil moisture sensor monitored the substrate water contents of the tray. So whenever the substrate water contents reading is less than the set point, which was 10%, 20%, 30%, 40%, so at each treatment has their own set point. So whenever the substrate water contents of the tray is less than the set point, 
it will turn on the solenoid valve to irrigate that tray so it could maintain that specific substrate water content throughout the experiment. So that happened in the treatment and this, is, this graph shows how it happened. So on the x-axis it shows the time and y-axis it shows substrate water content. So as you see here each 40%, 30%, 20%, 10% shows very different treatment. It shows very clear treatment effect on substrate water content because it's the treatment. I just wanted to show in this slide that it, affected, it was very effective to have this treatment with substrate water content. And at this treatment, I also measured how they acclimate or how they respond to this kind of substrate water contents level. So I used the Cyrus tube from PP system to measure the stomatic conductance and photosynthesis level of the plant. And I also measured the water potential, lead water potential through the cyclomatter. So I also wanted to this, um, the compare between the water potential and substrate water contents and also live relative water contents which can show a little bit of turgor of the plant and I measured it every two or three days at noon time. Um, the reason why I measure every two or three days is I didn't know when it will reach the set point and what will happen during the drying period so try, I try to have more often measurement to see how they change it over time. So actually I have a very nice story about this. So I will talk about this in a few next slides. And at the same time when I sampled the, um, the physiological responses, I also sampled the gene expression for, um, I also sampled the leaves for the gene expression. So I also used the similar method of previous petunia study has done with trigel method. I extracted RNA and I used the real-time PCR, which is quantitative PCR, but it would take a lot of time to explain all of the pathway. So I will just skip it. But what I wanted is just show you that the soil moisture sensor can work with all the molecular biologists as well who are very interested in the substrate water contents level, drought physiology, in molecular level as well. And what I was very interested in was ABA, the abscisic acid, the plant hormone. This is very closely related to the drought stress of the plant. So what it happens when the substrate goes dry, that there will be a lot of synthesis of ABA in the roots and in the leaves as well. So this abscisic acid, ABA, will translocate to the leaves and this ABA will affect the stomata, which is kind of a gate for the plant to have some kind of water movement. It will close, this ABA will close the stomata and when the stomata will be closed, there will be less transpiration of the plant. So from that, plant can keep the water inside of the plant that's how the plant survived in some drought condition with this kind of plant hormone. So this is very important hormone in plants. So I wanted to quantify how much this plant hormone affected by this drought. So I used that um, ELISA method, which is enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay. So it worked pretty nicely and I will share this result as well. So as a result, Excuse me. So as a result, I previously showed this substrate water content change over time. And because I measured every two or three days, this arrow shows when I measured the physiological responses and when I sampled the um, leaves for gene expression and ABA treatment, uh, ABA quantification. And this solid dot shows when they were, they are drying. So I try to measure between during the drying period and after they reach the set point. Because I thought about 
yeah, may, there might be have some acclimation after they reach the set point. So I just distinguish between during the drying period and after the set point. So after the set point, as you can see, is uh, open so, uh, solid dots represent during the drying period, and open circle shows after the set point. So this is what it shows in physiological responses. Uh, on the left slide, it shows stomatal conductance, how open, how stomata opens, and on the right graph, it shows the photosynthesis. And each graph shows on the x-axis is substrate water contents. So when is on the left, it's lower substrate water contents, and as you might expect, as substrate water contents goes down the stomatal conductance and photosynthesis decreased and this was during the drying period and what happened after they reached the set point it will show you in open circle so after they reached the set point 20% and 30% substrate water contents treatment increased a little mostly recovered their stomatal conductance and photosynthesis back after they reached the set point, which showed the acclimation of the plant at the substrate water contents levels. But 10% substrate water contents treatment, it didn't show any acclimation, and it seems like they have very severe drought at this level of substrate water contents. And I can also show you the water potential level. So this red line so on the left graph it shows the water potential and on the right graph it shows the ABA concentration. So on the left graph the water potential, the red which is 10% substrate water content, it also decreased the water potential but it recovers back the water potential. Because um, previous slides show that drought responds to the water potential but actually based on the substrate water content the water potential also changes over time. And 20% and 30% substrate water contents treatment, it just maintained a little decreased water potential throughout the experiment. And more interesting story was on the ABA concentration. So on the x-axis, as time goes by, after two days after the treatment started, the 20%, uh, no, 30%, 20%, 10%, which were the drought stress treatment, increased the ABA concentration of the leaf. So that was very interesting. So even little drought stress gave the ABA increase inside the leaf. But 20% and 30%, they maintained that increased the ABA level throughout the experiment until the end of the experiment. But 10%, which was, which was most likely the severe drought stress, it increased further the ABA concentration inside the leaf, and it was about ninefold of the control, which is very high concentration of ABA. So it showed very interesting severe drought um, response of 10% substrate water content treatment. And we found out it has very interesting comparison between stomata conductance because ABA is mostly controlling stomata. So I tried to compare between stomata conductance and ABA concentration. So as you see on the left graph and right graph, it shows a little similarity. You cannot see it, I will show you. If you will flip this stomata conductance graph, so the 10% will be at the top and 40% which was the control is at the bottom. So they show very pretty similar pattern. So I plotted the graph to show the stomatal conductance and ABA concentration on the next slide. So on the x-axis it shows leaf ABA concentration and on y-axis it shows stomatal conductance. And yeah, you can see they have very good correlation there might be a very good line. Let's see it. So this is very good line, like this, and it says R square 0.85. We were very surprised. We 
actually expected some of this, but more important, um, more interesting thing that I had, it was regardless of treatment or time. So they had very good correlation between live ABA concentration and stomata conductance. And it has been done with very good treatment of substrate water contents. And at the final, at harvest, I measured the live relative water contents, so how much togger it could have by visual. So I measured those and only 10% substrate water contents, which is very severe that we thought only that 10% has significantly lower leaf relative water contents. And other than 10% substrate water contents treatment, 20% and 30% and 40% substrate water contents has the same, um, not significantly different relative water contents. So it shows that 10% has visually as well, it shows very severe drought stress. So in conclusion, what I have shown here in this study, I showed there was substrate water content specific physiology and it shows some partial recovery at 20% and 30% substrate water contents, but there was no recovery at 10% substrate water contents treatment. So from that I could say the 10% substrate water contents might be severe drought for petunia and from looking at the acclimation at 20% and 30% substrate water contents for petunia, it might be mild drought and it could help to have a better ability to kind of longer shelf life or having a better landscape performances for petunia, 20% or 30% might be good to have the mild drought. So in summary, I really like the soil moisture sensor to have a better idea about the soil environment of the plant. So from that I could get a very good idea how, which substrate water content gave which plant response to that drought stress. So that gave me very good power and from monitoring and controlling substrate water contents, I could have very good control maintaining substrate water contents very well. So it was pretty nice, I really liked that. And from that I could understand that environment, the soil environment much better. And if you can use other sensors like temperature relative humidity sensor and light sensor, then you can get a better idea about what environment you had for all the physiological, plant physiological studies to understand what environment affect them. So from that I could get the substrate water content specific physiology and I really like to have further research for those kind of responses to different kind of environment, especially for water deficits. So I really like to thank you and um, thank you for the cooking device to having me for this wonderful seminar. And if you have any questions, I would like to take any Thank you very much.